Hello and welcome back to the Danfoss High School at Marine Competence Center in Holmestrand, Norway. Today we are going to look into under voltage ride through. This is a Veritas class requirement for safety. Uh, on DP class 2 ships there is a requirement that critical functionalities like thrusters, maneuvering, dynamic gangways and stuff, they should continue running even though there is up to a two second power blackout. And there should be no need for reset from PLC or humans or anything. Active front end should not trip. The inverters for motor drives also should just restart. And this is a functionality that you need to set up the drives in a special way to achieve this. And we are going to look into that. In a normal configuration, the voltage ride through is not activated, and then even a small 10 millisecond uh, power blackout will cause this. Stop. So then you need a restart from engine control room, resetting of stuff, startup sequences and everything. You get it started, but it takes a lot longer time. And for some ships, some functionalities, this might not be the desirable uh, functionality. You need everything to just bam restart when those two seconds for blowing a fuse on the AC bus bar is blown out. Then you want to get back into operation for maneuvering, thrusters, dynamic gangways and this kind of stuff. Typical application where we see the requirement for under voltage ride through is these service vessels for windmill maintenance. They can have quite sophisticated gangway systems that are servo-operated, electrical servo-operated. And then you have the service guy standing here, positioned standstill in front of the door or platform of the windmill, regardless of the waves and the current and the wind. The ship will stay into position and also the gangway will operate in all axes to keep this guy stable. However, it is usually powered by an electrical system that maybe looks something like this. You have diesel generators, but also battery feeding an AC grid, sometimes also a DC grid system. You have propulsion systems to keep the ship into position that are electrical fed. Gangways, servo systems are also fed from the same system. And then you can imagine what happened if the AC grid experience are short circuit in its distribution. To blow this fuse you need a lot of reactive current and it might be, especially when the batteries are the only power source, that the AC grid is weak. So you will see a surge in the voltage on the AC bus bars and this can last up to two seconds before you blow the fuse. What happened in these two seconds? You don't want to lose the propulsion and the gangway functionality for more than maximum two seconds and it should come back into operation as fast as possible without too much fuss. Imagine what happened with this guy. If you're losing all this functionality you can risk that the ship start drifting into the windmill. Let's start with a quick version showing the parameters needed to get this functionality. In the active front end, which actually is a grid application in active front end mode, you need to set bit number 11 in control options, and that is decimal 2048. This will deactivate the supervision of the line sync and the supply voltage, so it will ride through the blackout without tripping these faults. On the motor inverter units, you need it to avoid extracting energy from the DC bus, so, so you kind of preserve the DC bus as long as possible. Here you set the level where the power limit should be put to zero. So using the under voltage power DC level for this, in our testing we are going to put it to 650 because then the curve is a little bit more clear. Activate it by your power limit, set it to minus 0 0.1. Also the field bus startup, put it to one ready because then it will restart automatically and also flying start, the start function to flying start, because most likely the shafts will be rotating, especially if the blackout is very short, then uh, you have rotating shafts. In closed loop, the flying start will be active anyway, 
but if it's an IF start or an open loop start, then this should be set to flying start. In the application manual for the grid converter, the bit 11 functionality is explained. Here we see how the voltage low warning triggers the disabling of the running of the drive and keeps it running again when the voltage go above the warning level. Note that the DC link cannot go to zero. It need to be above the under voltage trip level. For a 500 volt drive, which usually have a nominal of 675 volt, that means that you can go from 675 down to 480 something. And for a 690 volt AC drive, which have a DC voltage of about 1000 volt, then the DC voltage cannot go lower than about 600 volt, because otherwise it will just game over. For the motor inverter in the Marine application manual, you will find a description of how the functionality is for the under voltage power level and also the under voltage power limit, how this works when you use it for this under voltage ride through. Normally, a propulsion unit with active front end and inverter without the under voltage ride through activated, when the AC voltage drops from the ship grid, the active front end will trip quite immediately from line sync fault and supply voltage fault. With the under voltage ride through activated, the sensing on the D7 will activate the under voltage ride through and it will hibernate, wait until the voltage comes back. On the DC volt, it looks like this. When you have the green curve here, the AC voltage drops. The consumers will extract energy still from the bus down to the level we have set on the inverters where they stop stop extracting energy so the propellers consumers they will stop extracting in this way we preserve the dc link as long as possible after two seconds that's the requirement from veritas then the voltage on the ac grid comes back the DC voltage will first start increasing from the pre-charge or from the freewheeling diodes uh, through the grid converter. It will go up to the diode rectifier level, in this case 580 volts. Then the active front end will restart automatically and the 740 volt DC link voltage will be back. Our consumers, they will, on the same level as this, restart the propulsion and consumers. And note, there is also a optional from parameter adjustable time delay for the active front end to restart. Why is that? If you have four big propulsion units, you don't want to have them to start bam on the same time. And the diesel generators and also the grid converters from a battery supply will suffer if everybody, all the propulsion units, kicks in at exactly the same time. So you put some seconds delay between them, so they start up in a sequence. In this way, you soften the load on the diesel gensets or the grid converters. For uh, reference, let's see what happens without the under voltage ride through activated. The active front end is shown here, the DC voltage, the current for the active front end is the red one, and here the green curve is the AC voltage on the ship grid. The consumer, the motor, the current is the blue one here, and the green curve is the motor torque. So let's see what happens. When the ship grid voltage drops, the DC voltage of course drops. It drops down to this level, and this is the under voltage controller on the consumer. So when the voltage on the DC link drops this much, it will try to preserve the DC voltage by taking energy from the spinning reserve of the motor, by braking on the motor. And this only lasts very, very short time. There is not much energy to pick up there. So the DC voltage keeps on plummeting down to 300 volt, and you probably have an under voltage trip on most of the drives. Here, the AC voltage is restored. The DC voltage comes back from the pre-charge circuits and also the freewheeling diodes, but 
There is no startup of the active front end. The active front end doesn't start, the consumer doesn't start. So you basically, your battery is running low. Yeah, your ship will be dead in the water. And now let's see what happened with and the voltage ride through activated. Okay, a little bit different. Restart. Good. Let's see what's happening here. This is the behavior with the under voltage ride through activated. We see that when the ship AC grid drops, the DC voltage is dropping and the consumers still extract energy, but only down to DC voltage level 650 volts, which we decided, then it quits, doesn't extract energy from the DC bus. Now we preserve the DC bus as long as possible, all the way down here, and still it is above trip level, under voltage the trip level of the drives. Here the AC ship grid is restored. First thing happening is the pre-charge and the freewheeling diodes, they take the voltage up to this level. Then after a predefined from parameter time delay, then the active front end starts producing the DC link. At 650 volt, consumer kicks in back. Now the ship propeller is pulling a current, a torque, and the ship is back into full operation of critical function, fully automatic, no reset, no PLC, no humans have to interfere, no hands.